Hi all, welcome to today's session on energy sources, a topic in module 1 of Elements of Mechanical Engineering presented by myself, Ranjit P.K., Depart Assistant Professor in Department of Mechanical Engineering at Global Academy of Technology. The contents are split into two parts. On the left, what you see, you have all the forms of energy that are being discussed and on to the right, a few environmental issues that are the wind energy the wind. involves see extracting one one. energy from the wind when it is being blown. This makes the whole setup is known as a windmill. So the question would be how to extract energy from the wind using a windmill. Whenever the wind is blowing or whenever the wind is moving, there is a movement of a wind, the rotor blades rotate. These rotor blades are connected to the gear setup using a gearbox which in turn is connected to the generator. The gearbox and the generator is placed inside a nacelle. So as the wind keeps blowing, the rotor blades rotate, the gears rotate and the generator also rotates. That is the alternator in the generator rotates, although at different speeds and thus power would be extracted. The power extracted here is DC power which is converted to AC power in the generator and is then transmitted through the power cables. Whenever the blades are to be designed, there are various forces that are acting that needs to be considered for designing the wind blades. This nacelle has a movement called a yawing mechanism meaning it moves either to the left or to the right with the help of a sensor when depending on the wind direction and depending on where which direction the wind is moving. Once the power is generated it would be transmitted to the switchyard and then to the places where it is required. You can use this sketch for writing in the examination and explanation. The next form of energy extraction involves utilizing nuclear reaction. Uh, for this, the nuclear fuel that is uh, typically uranium is in the form of small pellets like something similar to a bullet is placed inside this reactor vessel and uh, the nuclear reaction is initiated. Now uh, in particular the fission reaction as we all know the fission reaction involves liberation of heat. This liberation of heat is utilized to extract energy from it. Uh, depending on the type of reactors used uh, the water is either directly in contact with the nuclear fuel in this case or it could be separate but in both the cases the uh, heat liberated by the nuclear fission reaction is utilized the water uh, the water absorbs the heat which is then converted into steam and then made to pass through a turbine that is a steam turbine to extract electrical energy. You can use this sketch for the purpose of the examination. The next form of energy is the hydro energy involving utilization of water as the source. In this method of extraction of energy, the water is stored at the reservoir also known as the head pond and this forms as an intake. This water is then made to pass through the penstock and made to pass through the turbine uh, thus uh, the uh, potential energy being converted into the kinetic energy in, in the turbine and the power is extracted and transmitted. The water spent water uh, is then made to pass through the uh, 
pass to the tail race through the draft tube depending on the type of the turbine utilized you can use this sketch for the purpose of examination the search tank here uh, has uh, is basically used for uh, any abnormal pressure build up while it is pass passing through the pen stock the water is stored here temporarily if there is a build up of too much pressure for the biofuels there is no sketch that needs to be written uh, it would be only a short note we understand this with the use of a video biofuels Biofuels are combustible fuels created from biomass. The term biofuel is usually used to describe liquid fuels such as ethanol and biodiesel that are used as replacements for transportation fuels like gasoline, diesel, and jet fuel. Ethanol is an alcohol formed by fermentation. It is used as a replacement for or additive to gasoline. Biodiesel is an oil produced by extracting naturally occurring oils from plants and seeds. Biodiesel can be combusted in diesel engines or blended with diesel fuel. Biofuels are grouped in three categories based on the type of feedstock used to produce them. First generation biofuels are produced from food crops. For ethanol, feedstocks include sugarcane, corn, maize, and others. For biodiesel, feedstocks are naturally occurring vegetable oils such as soybean and canola. Second generation biofuels are produced from cellulosic material such as wood, grasses, and inedible parts of plants. This material is more difficult to break down through fermentation and therefore requires pretreatment before it can be processed. Third generation biofuels are produced using the lipid production from algae. In addition, the term advanced biofuels is used to describe the relatively new technological field of biofuel production that uses waste such as garbage, animal fats, and spent cooking oil to produce liquid fuels. Biofuels are currently the only viable replacement to petroleum transportation fuels because they can be used in existing combustion engines. This is an increasingly important advantage with growing concern about the environmental impacts of fossil fuels around the globe. Biofuels can also help provide energy security in regions that do not have hydrocarbon resources but do have suitable agricultural conditions. While there is some dispute over just how renewable biofuels are, it is generally accepted that the crops used to produce them can be replenished much faster than fossil fuels which take millions of years to form. Concerns about biofuels are usually centered around the fact that they are an agricultural product. Producing these biofuel crops can mean competition with other natural resources, particularly land, food, and water. First generation biofuels use only edible crops, which has led to biofuel crops displacing food sources in certain regions and subsequent spikes in food prices. In many regions of the world, subsidies are provided for these crops, which only amplifies these issues. In addition, increased agriculture of any form comes with concerns of deforestation and biodiversity loss, as well as water and fertilizer use, which have environmental and climate impacts all to their own. That's biofuels. The next method of utilizing uh, extracting energy is through solar. It can be categorized into two parts, the solar uh, heat and light. The heat part of it is called the solar thermal. You typically use for heating the water or air and cooking. And the next part is the light uh, that is used for electricity produ production through the help of a solar PV. In the uh, solar water heater, the cold water is made to pass through a solar collector or the solar water heater. This basically has no moving parts. It is a series of tubes, copper tubes set inside a square box. Uh, the water uh, as it passes through these set of tubes absorbs the solar radiation, gets heated. The heat hot water is stored in a uh, water heater, I mean storage tank which also typically has an additional uh, water heater uh, and this water uh, is then 
uh, extracted whenever the water is hot water is needed the what storage tank is well insulated so that the water does not become cold the cross section looks something like this this is a cross section of a uh, flat plate collector or the solar water heater it has an uh, thermal insulation within a casing and on the top there is a transparent cover typically this is a glass cover and these are set of the tubes these tubes are made of copper uh, water is typically passed through these tubes and as the solar radiation is incident the tubes uh, the water in the tubes absorb the heat and get heated uh, Typic, it could be either water or air that could be passed and uh, typically wherever the usage is needed for air it is used or water it is used as required. The next is solar pond. Solar pond utilizes the difference in the temperature at the top layer of the ocean to the bottom uh, and is then utilized to generate electricity. Although it is not a, a highest form of efficient system of utilization, nevertheless it is also a form of uh, extraction of energy using solar. Uh, the uh, ocean can be created into three different zones, upper convective zone, I repeat, upper convective zone, non-convective zone and lower convective zone. You could see the temperature concentration uh, as the lower as the zones change the upper convective zone has the least temperature as the depth increases I mean the temperature keeps on increasing uh, as the depth increases then within the non convective zone there is a linear increase and in the lower convective zone it is the highest temperature gradient and the concentration of salt water is also shown in this the temperature difference between the top layer and the bottom layer is used as the useful heat in extraction of energy. Uh, it would be better if you write the depth versus temperature concentration graph along with the sketch so that it acts as an advantage in the examination. The next part is utilization of uh, solar energy for generating electricity through the use of a PV cell or a photovoltaic cell. This photovoltaic cell or a system convert light energy directly into electricity commonly known as a solar cell. The simplest being the calculators which we use on a daily basis. What happens in this solar PV cell is uh, basically sunlight what is incident is composed of photons or the bundles of energy radiant energy. When these uh, bundles of energy or the photons strike a PV cell they could be either reflected or absorbed. Uh, only the absorbed photons generate electricity through the help of uh, uh, the uh, silicon cell. This uh, photovoltaic cell is typically made up of silicon. The uh, photons strike the uh, electrons in the uh, end type. They get uh, uh, excited and then there is an energy transfer through the help of a band gap energy and this uh, change in the energy is utilized to generate electricity. We will look at some of the environmental issues now that are uh, known to us. The first one is the global warming. We all are aware that there is an increase in temperature uh, of the earth in recent times. That is, uh, we are feeling too hotter and there is no proper uh, segregation of all the seasons in the earth. This is happening due to the global warming. Global warming is basically caused by the greenhouse effect. What happens in this is the incident radiation when it reaches the sur earth's surface uh, through the space some of the ref uh, radiation is reflected. Uh, but however, most of the radiation is absorbed in the earth's surface and this keeps warming. Uh, this keeps the earth keeping warm. The radiation uh, involves infrared radiation as well, which is emitted by the earth's surface. This radiation does not go back 
to the atmosphere uh, meaning the, uh, this uh, heat is trapped within the atmosphere of the earth uh, causing the increase in the temperature and thus the greenhouse effect and therefore giving rise to the global warming. The next layer, uh, the next topic in the environmental issue is the ozone layer. Now basically ozone is a layer uh, that is formed on the surface of the earth with a distance of about 20 to 50 kilometer. This ozone is protecting the earth from the sun's harmful ultraviolet radiation by absorbing the ultraviolet radiation. Uh, this uh, 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 depletion of the ozone layer is basically caused by use of chlorofluorocarbons typically used as refrigerants and spray propellants it is which, uh, exposed by, by the help uh, of this ozone uh, the ultraviolet radiation uh, split the chlorine atom present in this cfc chlorofluorocarbon hcfc hydrochlorofluorocarbon halons and methyl bromide etc the uh, usages uh, of these compounds chemical compounds is listed that is aerosols refrigerants and various other solvents the fire extinguishers previously used pesticides contain these chemicals this uv ray splits the chlorine atom in the cfc molecules uh, this chlorine atom breaks up an ozone molecule thus making a hole uh, in the ozone layer and thus the ozone layer depletes